a zaraz trochu historii. Welcome, comrades, to your podcast about all things on the series, The Americans. I am Allie Scales, one of your co-hosts, and I am joined by one of my favorite, favorite humans in this world, my Bruce husband, my Bruce bud, the incredible Jesse Jackson. Hey, Allie. Hi, Jess. How are you today? I am good. Uh, you know, maybe we are going to get to Epcot. Are we? We just might. Would huh? I love to see Elizabeth with ears on? Absolutely. Well, that would make my day. So, uh, where I, I, where do we begin? Okay. Where do we begin? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna save a spot. Um, I'm not going to talk about it now, but there is. I had a toward the ending of the episode. I had for a moment. I was confused, but um, so we start out with. You, go ahead. You start out. The, because if I remember correctly, as you were watching the episode, <laughs> I, I got a text. Oh, my goodness. I'm having such Martha anxiety. <laughs> That's exactly what you got. Yes. I mean, it was at the at – the, um, I think I even wrote to you. I'm at the 31 mark. I'm at the 31 mark in the episode, and I'm having Martha anxiety. I literally was like, ah, I had it like, – like, you know, I've discussed before. I had to pause it, and I, like, was like – I don't know. Can I handle what's going to happen? Let's 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 just dissect a little bit first, though. First off, Matthew Rice directed this episode. Does everybody understand that? You know what I mean? He directed this episode, and for what an episode for him to direct to be at the helm at. You know, and the first few minutes of the episode, and if you have not seen it, this is all spoilers. Everything is a spoiler. There's nothing that we can hold back on right now, people. The first, you know, prior to the credits, right, there's no talking. And that in itself and how this show can bring you in, you know, without even di- – without dialogue, without anything. And, you know, bef- before the credits and you're already – your heart – is racing your head is scrambling a million thoughts you know you don't even know and to see Allison Wright's performance and his performance and everything that was happening in that time um in that cold dingy safe house you know with the wallpaper peeling and you know and everything just broke you apart it broke you apart it was like any other marriage forget that it was the FBI hanging over them forget that it's the KGB holding on it was like any other marriage just falling apart right then. Absolutely. That's what I got from it. And when the at the, when I see, you know, that silence and they're driving, um the I was thinking of uh long-term parking of the Sopranos. Oh, and my God. When um, – Dre, you know, it was Dre was in with Stevie in the car. Yes. And, oh. and, you know, Adriana is sitting there in the passenger seat. Looking out the window. Yes, and just, just – knowing. That, you know, Silvio – is she knew she was going to die. Yeah. There was and, nothing. Right. And there's nothing she could do. And it <laughs> and Martha had that same look of not that she's going to physically die, but, but she's that, dying inside. Yes, Everything she's dying about inside. Her is dying. Yes. Yes, her life as she knows it is gone. Yes. Yeah. Now Absolutely. When they got there and, you know, the small plane and, you know, how 
you know, just how they, you know, also, you know, you know, they take out first the um, rat with the glander sample, yes. you know, and they get, put that on the plane, and then they hand Martha her bag, you know, and and um, um, they get in the plane, and that plane starts to taxi, and Martha does not take her eyes off of Clark, you know? No, does she does not. not grimace, does not smile, does not tear up, does not anything, you know what I mean? She's steadfast in that face. And, you know, and, and, and that plane turns, and like magic, those lights come up in this field. And at first, when those lights came up, I went, the FBI knows, it's lights. Like, yeah. I never would have thought lights were coming up in the field for a runway. I thought, oh, my God, those are like car lights. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the plane I turned do. around, and it was car lights. You know, like, you're busted. Mm-hmm. But that wouldn't be the show. No. But I thought it, and you thought it. Yeah, I, I was wondered if the plane was going to crash. Um, ah. You know, when the lady said, "I have a pilot." Yeah, I have a pilot for something else. Mm-hmm. I was wondering well, what the that something was. else was the glander sample. Right, exactly. We find out now. Right. Yes, they do lead you down that. We have another thing going on. I'll take care of it. Yes. <laughs> you know. We'll yeah. kill two with one. Two birds. Absolutely. You know, one stone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so 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 Martha goes off on the plane. Okay. Yes. And we find out a little bit um, later on from Gabriel that, you know, um, she safely arrived in Cuba and will be going on to Prague. Okay. So we'll put that – I think we should just put that aside for a second because of everything else within this okay. episode. And we will circle back to that. Especially after some little bit of inside information from Miss Allison Wright herself today that came out. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get back to that little bit of gossip, or or is it? You know, little teasers that Miss Wright might have um, shared today. But let let's let let's go down to this whole. You know. You know. So without them, obviously. Um, over at the FBI, you know, we have Beeman and Gad and them, you know, still looking and looking and trying. And, you know, from this, from what we talked about in the last episode, from their search of both Mothers and Clark and then Clarks, and they have a fingerprint and they can't find it anywhere. And obviously they know they'd have Mothers' fingerprints and nothing else. You know, then it, it wasn't like, you know, um, technology today where an NCIS, Abby Shudo could take, you know, a half part this part, this one, one finger, one nodule, and make a fingerprint out of it. You know, this is still 1983 we're talking about, you know, and um, Absolutely. they have this partial fingerprint, and they're looking in every database, and, you know, they can't. And, you know, and finally you see, you know, this whole scene in the, um, in the um, special red light room, as I call it, over at the FBI, you know, the um, – what's it called a um not a, a skiff right a skiff that's what right. those rooms are called a skiff and um you see gate you know gad finally leaving walking to the elevator with beeman right on his tail and gad knows what's about to happen to him don't you think oh yeah um I mean, he knows as he talked about in the last episode i'm head of the fbi counterterrorism and my secretary married a KGB agent. Officer. Officer. Yeah. Officer. I, I, yeah. I don't like to correct you. My, my no, no, no. You're right. But it makes a difference. Yes, it An does. An officer. It's like that much like more like, oh. You know, and um, when he's sitting by, when he's, you know, by the elevator, you know, and, and, and Stan tries to um, – you know, use a little maybe of his est from back in the day, you know, and try to be like, uh, well, you know, I knew a guy and they just really wanted him to go up there because he was a coin collector or a stamp collector or whatever. And Gad just looks at him and he's like, yeah, I don't collect anything. <laughs> like, thanks, but we'll see you. And um, we can get back to, you know, we have, it's kind of like, and if you watch this, you know what I mean? You know, you, you, we'll fast forward, we'll go back, but to keep him with Gad's storyline, you know, again, not a killed-off player, 
they leave him on a trip with his wife to Asia. I believe we find out that his wife's from Thailand, I think it was, um, when Stan goes to visit him at his home. Um, so they don't kill him off. Um, they have him going off to Asia, which is not too far from Russia. I mean, not for nothing. And the biggest thing Gad wants to leave the note on is do not lose sight of this. You know, do not. Just because it's going cold and it's going, do not lose sight, you know? And even as they joked, you know, at times, like, you know, like, um, Beeman was, you know, advising, you know, telling, you know, giving him up to keep being up to date. We're not allowed to bring a picture in. We're not allowed to bring this in. And, you know, the joke was, but can you still bring a pen in? And Beeman's like, <laughs> crazy enough, yeah. Crazy enough, yeah. You can't bring a picture of your wife. You can't do this, but you can yeah. bring a pen in. Which is, yeah, so funny. Um, so funny. So I, funny. I hope we see um, – John Boy. Yeah, John Boy again. Love him. Yeah, he's been so good in this. But um, such – and in such grace he's taking this. Yes. Um, just Because so, he realizes. He realizes. Yeah. I think he does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of my secretary. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, hey, um, there's going – someone's head has to roll, and, um, you know, I'm the one that's going to do it. I mean I, I have to pay the price. Um, I love the fact that Stan inadvertently helped – um, Philip, no, they made the right call. Right. When he comes in, I mean, the guy comes in for the beer, you know, you know, yeah. a real neighborly, it's a true neighborly thing. We have it here. You know, you have yeah. it where you are, you know, yeah. and you got you a know, beer. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, no, the joke was that he can't seem to find them because the kids were drinking them the last episode. Oh, yes. Good point. Yes. The three kids were sitting there having a beer the last episode, and he can't even put that – he can't find Martha. You think he's going to be – he can't put together that his kids are drinking beer. How is he going to find Martha? Good point. I mean I'm sorry. That's what I was chuckling at that part, like, you know, and I'm like, really, Stan? Oh, Allie, I missed that totally. I am so glad you brought that up. That is perfect. Ah! Right now that you think about it? Oh, yeah. That's absolutely perfect. They ended the episode with the three kids on the couch. Yeah. And so that does make total sense. Right. Uh, yeah. That's he has to come in for beer. Yeah. I'm telling you, nothing in this show is done without. No, you That's why right. this show is so amazing. And I can talk about it, you know, from here to tomorrow if I was absolutely. allowed. Um, but when he, you know, when he, I think he uses – the word disaster, like I yes. think he actually uses for he says something for three days or whatever for three days, which fits into the whole, you know, timeline of this whole thing with Martha because it really right. is real time that they did it in. Um, um, he talks about this, you know, disaster at work, yes. and that that you think and you hoped it would give fill up. A little relief, you know, like when he said to Elizabeth mm -hmm. afterwards, they knew. Yeah. I pulled her, they knew. You know, it's good. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, like at least he felt like she didn't, I think he feels a little, I didn't just completely destroy her life. You For know, nothing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, you know, that, all of this going on, and, we, and I just want to circle back to the Jennings kitchen. Because mm -hmm. this week, the scenes that were in that Jennings kitchen, in that Jennings house, were in insane between this with, you know, Stan coming in. And now let's talk about when Paige comes home. You know, they have this tension. Everything just yes. happened with Martha. You know, mm -hmm. Elizabeth and um, – I was going to say Clark, but Elizabeth and Philip are at this, you know, and the next morning – Paige comes home from skipping Bible study or, or after school, whatever it is. Right. Oh, my God. And the role that that Elizabeth, you know, the, the motherly, but yet the spy, yet the, I mean, she just begins to ream her a new, you know what. 
about this relationship with Pastor Tim and Alice. And who I'm very happy is still on the show for personal reasons. But think about it. And she is locked into that relationship now. And as a teenager, there is a good chance she may have um, her interest in religion, you know, may have been a fad and she had moved on. But now then she can't. Oh, she can't. And she very quickly – I've read – several reviews of the episode that said that this was um, Elizabeth's and Carrie, you know, Russell's. Um, this is Elizabeth, you know, building this for a couple of years. And they, the theory was that the reason why her co-star and friend offstage, right, Wanted mm -hmm. to direct this because he wanted to make sure she got her full right. glory. Yes. Um, I mean, you know, and all of a sudden she's no longer a mom. She is an employer. She is Gabriel. Yes, she is. The page. That's, that is right. She's her and, handler. And that is Absolutely. sad for them both. It's very sad. Yeah. Uh, and just that's that's all you can do. And you're just going, wow. And – and Paige is just stuck where she can't. You see it all over Holly Taylor's face. Yes. Oh, what a brilliant job. We always talk about her she, uh, job. About she it. does. Exactly. Every and, character on the show after this episode should be nominated for an Emmy. You are preaching to the choir. Every Absolutely. character, every actor. I see Gabriel and Claudia sitting around that table. Uh, as handlers, but almost as parents. It almost is like, we've been through it all. What do these kids think? What are they doing? Why are they acting this way? That alone, I could have watched an hour of. Oh, yeah. An hour of, if not more. Because you've the got. Brilliant. The, you have the beautiful, talented Margot Martindale with and the beautiful and talented Frank Langella. Okay, yeah. And how can you not watch them for an hour? Doing exactly. That? You just, you're like, I could have watching them. Just talk. It was amazing. And you're right. I think you're – I did not think about that till you said it, but it is not just handlers. It's parents uh, talking about, oh, what are we going to do with kids today? And it kids, was – Yeah, what's wrong with these kids today? Exactly. Sorry, I just break into that. No, and it's <laughs> – It it's, is. It is also. And I love the idea that – what did they call Martha? An asset? An asset. Yeah. You know, you lost an asset. That's all you lost. Boy, was um, Philip not happy to hear that. And, oh, can we talk about the blow up at the end between him and Elizabeth? Hello. Now, you and okay. I – Okay. When you she and I – Yeah, go ahead. I mean, when you saw her – okay. It took me a minute. When they went to the est clip, you know, of the audience, it took me like a solid, well, maybe not a minute, but I was looking for Philip, you know, and they the way they panned the crowd. Absolutely. And all of a sudden I'm like, I looked right past her probably twice. I, I looked right past Elizabeth sitting there twice on my TV screen. And I have a pretty big TV screen in my TV room, you know. I didn't see her. I think that was part of where the trickery is and how they're so good with this. I it's agree. like that was the last person you would expect to see at Est. And when I finally looked at it and I, I, I hit the rewind and I said, how did I, it's the trick, the, the way they, they did it, the trick on the eye. And then when she comes home and she's at first, so I get it. I see. And then she becomes nasty. I see how they just want you to come back and spend your money. I see, and how she's demeaning it, and putting it down, and then ultimately putting Philip down, and that fight. Oh well, and it oh. is one of those. Um, she has always been more of the true believer, and this does seem very American, and I do love the, um, and and we are. In a certain way, 
we Bruce Buds are a little bit the same way unless you're trying to be careful where, well, I just don't get it. Well, you just don't understand. Mm-hmm. You know, it, well, you should listen to this music. You know, Bruce thing. You don't understand. Yeah, it's a Bruce thing. You don't understand. And versus it could be, no, he's just not your cup of tea. Uh, we can't be friends anymore. No, no, no. That's a joke. Um, but in the circular logic of, well, if you don't get it means you need to do more of it all. And I think she has a valid point. It's a very capitalistic American thing to her, right? Mm-hmm. He, it helps her. And she's like, does it? I don't know. Linda and I have been married 30 years. Which and, is so beautiful. And when, when we were younger, we would have fights like these. And as our marriage grew, we learned to, okay, not fair for you to bring back old Absolutely. Crap, you know, Absolutely. seven I've years ago. I've been my husband a very long time. Not married 30, but you know, Charlie yeah. and I were high yeah. school sweethearts, so... Right. The same thing. Yes. And I also sometimes, and this is because Linda and I are human, you're fighting about something not what you're fighting about. Absolutely. Or you're just fighting because you had a bad day at work. Absolutely. Or you're stressed. And this was, I think, in my opinion, a lot to do with that. Absolutely. This, this was absolutely. It was, a, it was a accumulation of everything. Yes. And she said the wrong thing, and he said the wrong sure. thing, and then it was just Katie bar the door. We are going to have a come to Jesus meeting, a knockdown throwout. I mean, this was ugly. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. Every minute of it. Loved it it as an. Every minute of it. Yeah. Every minute. And she throws out there, right, that her friend, and we had talked about that. Remember, just recently, you and I talked about that. Gregory. uh, Yes, that, you know, she cared about him, and this was. And and sent him out to die in the streets. Because he knew that was better. Right. To, for the cause and, he, and to and, help and, her. And Philip comes back and says, you're going to compare to this? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And this is when he gets into, she wasn't simple. You right. Know, he's defending. He's very much complex. Yes. Very. And, and I do think, I believe he loves, um, Elizabeth very much. But he was in love with Martha in a different way. I think so too. And I Because he was able to be more him true self. Yes, I think so. Totally. Yeah. And there are times when you you have an irrational or maybe a rational desire to defend something. That it shouldn't matter to you whatsoever. Um, you know, once again, let's say it it truly doesn't matter if someone likes a Bruce Springsteen song or not. But, you know, or I don't care if you don't like my sister, but you reach that point where like, no, I, I have to defend that. Let's – there's so much to cover, and, you know, we, we, we might have to even at the touch of the next one cover a little bit from this one yeah. still because there's just so much. I mean they everything was touched, and, like, I don't know for you, but I want to go back to the beginning, you know, when they showed the um, the previously on. Yes. Did you catch what I'm about to say? Um, like, did you notice in the previous line? Was it, did it take you off guard for a minute? When they showed um, the da, 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 da. Lisa and her and husband. And Maurice. Yeah. Did you say for a moment, okay, where's this going? You know, I was, point? I, I was wondering, yes, I thought we'd see them. Again. But, I, but I'm also wondering if it was maybe something they were going to um, come back again. You know, 
Yeah, but I mean, with so, so much in this episode and to bring this, I mean, there's like you talk about Gregory. We're yes. talking about Lisa. We're talking about Maurice. She goes to the movies with young he. There's Gabriel. There's Claudia. There's Paige. There's Henry. There's Stan. There's Gad. There's like every character is in this episode in some way. Did you uh, every character? Did you see what movie they went and saw and made uh, them cry? The Outsider? No, no. The Outsiders is the one they snuck into. Mm-hmm. I went back. It was Tender Mercies, uh, which is a movie about redemption. Yes, it is. Uh, the great Robert Duvall plays a um, alcoholic, country, washed-up singer, and he um, settles in and kind of rebuilds his life as a – Simple kind of stepdad and a new husband to Tess Harper. It's a very sweet, gentle movie and um, a lot about redemption and making a new life for yourself. And as you have said many times, nothing is an accident on this show. Nothing. Yes. And then to have them go The Outsiders… Uh, it's just it's, – yes. it just adds to it. Yes, absolutely. Adds to it. Did you think that um, – did you – we still don't know why they're developing this. No, but, with, but Philip finally talked about it. Yes. How's that going, right? Right. Yeah. And, and so – you I know, have a I have a crazy theory. I'm talking about North Korea, baby. You yes. know what I'm thinking about this. Well, I have this theory that she wants a pink Cadillac. <laughs> no, uh, who doesn't? Fresh velvet seats. I riding in the back. Um, I <laughs> yeah, think, come on. Yes, I. You got to giggle a little. I on love that it. One. Elizabeth doesn't have any friends, and I think she really. Likes this lady. Yes. And this is I, going to be a problem. This young E is going to be Elizabeth's Martha. Yes. I think you're very correct. I knew where you were going with it. Yes. I can read your mind, comrade. I bet you can. <laughs> again, uh, if everybody's wondering what's wrong with my voice, we haven't touched on it. Yes, I'm sick again. Yes. <laughs> Jesse's co host did not just get this deep. Mm -hmm. Voice to see. Yes. <laughs> we have to, you know, sometimes we just have to add a little. You gotta have a little. Add that. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Um, I'm I'm one step away from asking you to sing, uh, Beth, from you know. Beth. From Beth from Kiss. Be Kiss. Yes. Won't we go away? <laughs> Did. Um, and you got me too. Yes. Thank you. Oh my God! No one gets me to sing. It was the worst. Oh, you know what someone said to me. I'm like a re when I called them today. Yes. They're like, hey, I didn't even have to call the 900 number. <laughs> Somebody said that to me today. Oh, that's hilarious. It's um, pretty funny. It was very funny. Uh, All right. So, like I said, th there's so much in this episode, and I don't know how long we're on already. Yeah. And I and I think we might have to break up a little into the beginning of the next episode. Um, I don't know about you, because I still have. 18 bullet items to cover. Okay. <laughs> From my watching of my moth. Like you call this episode the magic of David Copperfield. I call this the alley has moth or anxiety episodes. <laughs> you know. Because I couldn't even pass the 31 part. And so much more happened after that. Do you oh. think. Will we see Martha again this season? Okay. Let's, let's, let's talk some gossip for a minute. You, okay. know, you know me. I know some people. You know, I know a couple people. people. Yes, you do. I know people who know people. Yes. And I caught on to something, and one of the tweets happens to be deleted now. And I have a screen print. Ah. And, and one of the tweets was um, um, Allison Wright. Um, someone said to her, this one's still there. Someone said to Allison Wright, I'm so sad to see her go. There's always next season, right? You know, like with a question mark. And Allison answers like, huh? 
There's five more episodes to go in the season with lots of exclamation points. Then there's another. there was another tweet back and forth with some other people in the know, part of which is deleted, and it was about, I don't know what was going to go, what can go wrong. She's only on an airplane. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I don't know, and I could be a cheat, and I can go to IMDb, and I can try to see if, you know, She's listed in the other episodes, but I'm not because I am a watcher like you are, and I want to be surprised. Yes. So if you guys want to cheat and find out if Allison Wright is in any more future episodes, it might be listed on IMDb. But like I said, I'm going to hold out and not um, look. Um, did you know... When Philip was at the graveyard, uh, why he was there? Absolutely. Come on. So who yes. would he have to visit with? Who, whose grave would he be visiting? Right. But Gene. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he. You know, and he. You know, the thing is, we've seen Philip kill a million. You know. Whatever. Yes. We see all this, but again, this was for Martha. This wasn't for the the center. Mm-hmm. This wasn't for the Resident Dara. Sorry, I have to get that in one episode. Right. This wasn't, I mean, it was for the overall good, but this was directly to take the heat off of Martha. He killed this person. You know, and I think, you know, it broke Martha also, you know, um, by hearing it. And, you know, I remember when she was in her apartment and she had like the blood curdling you know, screams from her, no, no, this is not what I wanted, this is not what I, you know, this is not what I signed up for, this is not what I, you know, she was distraught, you know, Mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, and I think it's like, again, with Philip, with this Est, I think being Clark, being Martha's husband Clark, made Philip into a man and not just a spy, you know, not just a comrade. Yeah. And I, it's because of Martha and because of all of this. And he's become human. Mm-hmm. As we see when Elizabeth comes back to the safe house. Yes. <sighs> and oh. and for all their – you know, they've had their fight and they pushed about – you know, pushed each other's buttons. And then um, – when after meeting with Lisa and all the crisis, right? We have uh, to go to the police. We have to go to police. Yeah. I can't go to a meeting. I have to go to the police. I'm never going to feel clear if I don't go to the police. Yes. And with, you know, alcoholism was always going to kill her. Just didn't mm-hmm. think it would be with the bottle. Literally. Yes. Literally. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, um, Elizabeth's smoking, and she's in shock, and Philip rushes to help her. Rushes. Doesn't rushes. Miss beat. Yes. Not missing a beat. That's my wife. Yes. That's that, my yeah. wife, and she's hurt. Yes. I don't need to know a question. I need to get that cigarette. I need to do this. I need to help her. I, I don't want to know. I just need. And then we circle back to what we talked about with Claudia and Gabriel earlier about the two yeah. parents at the table and Gabriel right. watching them. Yes. Like and, a parent. And he makes the call, and I think you can make the argument he did it halfway out of kindness, and the other half just – it's like a it's like a good boss when you're having a bad day, and they say, Allie, go home. Take, go take a mental health day. Yeah, go take a mental health day. Yeah. You know, because in the long run, you're going to be a better employee. Absolutely. Yeah, and so it's selfish, and it's also, you know, to care about it. I think he's saying you need a break. Mm-hmm. And um, and also this will recharge your batteries. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was a little confused um, because, you know, Philip says, I guess we are travel agents. Which that is, was the best. Because that the was car. the title, the last one, right? And we should take the kids to Epcot. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was the best. Yeah. And – 
they show the Jennings family, you know, they watch everyone watching Copperfield make the Statue of Liberty vanish. And Except he didn't make the torch vanish. Right. Uh, you saw that, right? Uh, I saw that little light, yes. That's the freaking, that's the torch. Okay. Sorry, I live in New York. I see it all the time. I'm yeah, well, make it vanish. You actually, if you Google, it shows you how he probably did it. Which was I very think by interesting. Now we know, but this yes. was 1983, and Henry yes. was just absolutely like right. And I think Henry was more pleased that the statue, that David Copperfield did this. I would think he was. I think he was more pleased that his whole family was around because yes. earlier in the episode when he says, "And Dad won't be around to see it," and Dad's like, "Well, we will. I just lost a big client," which then Paige looked like she was going to just get sick, thinking yeah. somebody was killed, and because yeah. Paige is understanding it now, and then we circle back to the end. Oh, there's so much more that could be discussed, yeah. Jesse. Yeah, and so they're going to do – and then we get a flash forward. Seven months. And this was why I was a little confused. I thought, I know I, I know exactly where you're going. You're going to a pregnancy. Yeah, and I thought ah. the moment it was – Terry Russell. Yes, it was Philip and Elizabeth. But no, it's uh, Pastor, Pastor Tim, Tim and Tim Alice. And Alice. Yeah, because maybe they would. But the Americans are not that type of TV show. They're not writing no. Carrie Russell's pregnancy and just throwing no. the pregnancy in. They're having her hide behind a briefcase, like when she walks in when Stan and Stan and um and um Philip in the kitchen with the beer. You don't see her pocketbook is in front of her. You don't see this. They're filming around it. Yes. They're not and, adding it in. Um. And she is very pregnant right now. And how sad is they're playing street hockey. Philip, Pastor Tim, and Alice oh, drop, drop off, off Paige. Paige, and they, you know, she hugs them, and they walk in the house. And that face by the staircase. Yes, and... She's done. She, she, has, she has to give them the assignment. She gives them the brief, you know, briefs them, and... I don't know. I worry about, you know, Elizabeth and Paige relationship because it has become boss employee. Absolutely. Handler agent. And it's just so sad. And Paige can never, ever get out from this. No, un- that's it. Unless they kill. Um, Passes him yeah. Alice. Yeah. Which again, yeah. for personal reasons, I hope they don't. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> but it's just so Shout sad. Shout out to Kelly. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, just a wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. And I, I just am so impressed. Um, and, you know, this felt like a season finale. Absolutely. But it's not. Nope, and it was one of the longest running, you know, it was top three of the wrong, longest running episodes. I mean, time wise, yes. I think it popped in at. So, what would you give this one? Oh my God, this one? People, I'm going big. Nine and three quarter Statue of Liberty torches. I am right there with you. I am going to give it nine. Uh, you know, I was going to go nine and a half, but I will do nine and three quarter. Uh, broken vodka bottles. Absolutely. And I am just so excited the rest of the season um, to see I, where we're going. I I, I can't. Tomorrow, next episode, which airs next week, um, is called The Day After. And what if, you know, the juxtaposition on that one, you know, and, and, and the play on the words and all that. If you remember in the 80s as kids, Jesse, well, I'm a little older than you, um, The Day After. Yes. The, that the the film that aired and everyone watched. Yes. And everyone the next day was like, "Oh my god." Right. And uh, I actually think I'm older than you. So you don't have to talk about that. But okay. you can be older than me if you like. I'm a woman. You okay. know, I'll never admit to my age. All right. Um <laughs> so Allie, where can people find you and where how can they reach the show? Okay, well, you can reach the show now. We have a few new um, avenues for you to reach the show. We have on Twitter, at ComradesSMG. Um, we also have our email, 
comradessmg at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you, and especially if you want to send us an audio clip of any questions or thoughts you might have so we can incorporate it into our podcast. If you want to reach me directly with any questions or even the same, please find me on Twitter at A Forever New York Girl. That's A for E V A N Y G I R L. And now, Jesse. I can be reached at Jesse Jackson DFW. Not the other Jesse Jackson. Sorry, must say it. <laughs> By the way, what I love is I actually pointed toward the computer screen because I knew you would say that. Um, <laughs> And uh, I am also on uh, Facebook. You can find me, Jesse Jackson, Louisville, Texas. Um, if you want to hear more of Allie and I, um, head over to Set Lusting Bruce. Um, she has joined me multiple times and will join me even more in the future uh, talking yes, about our plans. other obsession. Yes, we do. But that's another subject. So for now, we're going to say good night, and we'll talk to you soon. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. Oh, I have yes. to say something very funny to you on that. Yes. Note. So I was booking my trip for the Bruce tour for Milan. Okay. And I have a screen print. I'm going to send it to you tomorrow. Do you know where the stopover was? Where? Moscow. <laughs> I swear on my life, I have the screen print. Delta wanted to send me from New York JFK to Moscow to Milan.